Time to wrap up day two here at the DreamHack Winter Grand Prix for 2015. Our Hearthstone event is starting to be coming to a close, but we have to fir first finish the round of 16. And I am joined by Lothar and Chucky from Team Dignitas to cast along his fellow Dignitas teammate. We have Kranich coming up here against Koi. Now, uh, Lothar, you've been watching the series all throughout the day, but I think um, when we look at all the players' performances, I feel like uh, Hoy has some of the best performances across every single series, right? Like, he's dropped one game the entire tournament. It's nuts. It's complete nuts when you think about it. The variance in uh, out, like that amount of rounds should have... Uh, stat he statistically should have at least lose w once, right? And right. He, he lost one, uh, one, one game. One game, not a series. He lost no, one he lost he series. Oh, he won oh okay. Sorry, I, I heard that he won lost one game. No, no, he lo okay. lost one series because he was an 8-1 in the Swiss. But in general, his stats are just insane. And if he keeps up with this pace, I mean, he's the unstoppable. He will he take the whole tournament here? Will he take the first place and then uh, will take another grand title after winning via game and Gfinity? Well, he does have a pretty tough opponent. Kranich is a pretty underrated player. He's the only player to uh, go to two BlizzCon finals in a row. Uh, and Chucky, you know him pretty well as a teammate. Yeah, I think Kranich has actually grown a lot just over the last year. I mean, coming from being at BlizzCon, being kind of his first introduction to the Western scene. And since then, he's basically just dominated Korean tournaments. He was the Korean, I mean, he was just the Asian Pacific champion this year. And just been doing really well in basically every tournament he plays in. Certainly. Well, ah, man, he's going to definitely Ooh. have to. This is the dream opener yeah. against any aggro deck. Innervate Keeper to maintain the board control and tempo at the same time just by sacrificing one card from your hand. Sounds really good. It's a th it's basically allowing this Keeper the Grove to deny anything from happening. And Kranich will crackle for... Six. Oh, six. Okay. Man, Crackle for three is just heartbreaking at that stage. Yeah, that was almost <laughs> practically a mean game in this situation because it will put uh, Shaman in a really awkward position. But right now, well, he has to make some commitments to the board. And yeah. seems like the second lap juggle will just be finished by that ref in the hand. It also it curves out perfectly because next turn if there will be like any minions dropping on the board, Force of Nature can be just used as a clear. Even though it seems like a huge commitment, I think it's just important to just seal the game with any kind of uh, minions on board. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of options available to the Druid here, um, including some ramp, but also including some wrath removal. Uh, wh what do you think is best, the Darnassus Aspirant or the Wild Growth when I you're pairing with the wrath? I think he really just wants to get down the Darnass Aspirant, more for the body, not really even for the mana ramp. As we can see, his hand doesn't really have much going on. Like Lothar said, he could force a nature maybe next turn. Uh, Hoy probably knows that Kranich is playing such an aggressive Shaman deck that really he just needs to stay alive. I think the main thing he's considering this turn is, is my hand weak enough that I need to cycle wrath? But that also involves taking two extra damage. So against the Shaman deck, I think... He has board control. The Innervate Keeper went, you know, a really long way towards locking up this early game. And now draws like Totem Golem for Kranich are basically dead because they don't do damage to your opponent. Mm -hmm. But burn spells are also dead because your opponent's just at 30. So where do you really go from here as Kranich? Yeah, it seems like if you don't have Fell Reaver on uh, on your on the side of the board, is your, any of kind of creatures that you will put on board are uh, kind of useless. Okay, well... I like using Lightning Bolt here, even though it does overload you. I assume that he's running things like Doom Hammers and other ways to really make this Rock Biter double dip in damage. And that's not the greatest draw for Hoi. We were talking about how he had a really good early game, but he can sputter out of actual minions to play and just keep playing removal stuff. So but eventually he'll get to those big minions. Yeah, well, Droid's density of the deck uh, will guarantee him some value minions later on. Because here's already the, the draw. This is the second innervate, one wild growth, uh, one darkness is aspirant. So there's almost every single card after that should be uh, a minion. So there's a lot of possibilities. And uh, cleaning this minion, cleaning the, the total column just saves HP, and I think that's correct, um, correct decision. Even though you're at a 30 HP mark, but it's I think it's okay just to you know not play around, Earthshock not play around, and kind of auto removal because it's still a guaranteed 2-1 trade uh, in Druid's favor. Sure. 
And that is a pretty big sigh of relief for Kranich. Like, oh, okay, man. Thank God he doesn't have, like, a five drop of any kind. Drew the Claw would have been bad. Even Azure Drake, to a certain extent, because it would have dug deeper to the deck. The follow-up here is certainly curious because the... Tidal Trog doesn't have anything that necessarily benefit off of, and Blood Mage does cycle. However, it is more vulnerable just to get wiped off the board. And in the case you do draw some uh, overload, that Tidal Trog would be significantly more damage. Yeah, I think he really just wants to dig for something that'll stick and do repetitive damage. Tidal Trog only really going to get in one damage with his current hand, so needs to find, like you talked about, Doomhammer. That's going to be 16 damage across four turns, which is going to go a long way towards getting Hoy's HP a little down. But, I mean, the way Hoy's drawing is really the only way Kranich gets back into this game, is if he keeps drawing kind of like blanks like this. Ooh. Feral Spirit's a nice pickup, as it's going to let him actually piece together nice. some cards. And That's perfect. Yeah, this is actually really great. I mean, Hoy's probably going to have to combo this. Yeah, it seems like a really great development of the board. And combo doesn't even fully clear everything either. Oh, well, there it is. Dr. Boom. But you will get 7, 9, 11 damage. It is? Yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe you might combo first to reduce the damage and then take your time playing Boom. Because you're aware that Shaman has only uh, one Ancestral Knowledge in this deck, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, could be one, could be two. I'm actually not too sure. I don't know his exact list, but... Definitely, that is in the deck, so it does have a little bit more longevity in it. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that he's choosing the combo first. I think he really looks at this as, I'm at 31 health, what and can he go has wrong one card in a low exactly. curving Shaman deck. Like, if he plays safe, it's very hard for him to lose. Exactly, and I also like this kind of thing. All right, well, Kranich still needs to find some way to pick himself up after that one, because it was brutal. Lava and burst, look, if he uh, didn't take care of that, like he played Dr. Boom on 7, like a good Hearthstone player should most of the time in life. <laughs> I mean, those are the things that you read your kid when they're about to go to bed. You're like, you know, always, always play Boom on 7. I don't know. I don't know how the actual song goes, but something like that. You have to record that. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of finishing up the lyrics. Here. But I think in this case, you know, comboing there was definitely the right choice because that Lava Burst would have had so much damage onto the Tunnel Trail. It would yeah. actually be, uh, if you uh, create those minions, a lucky Doomhammer draw would actually be almost yeah. sealed the game. He would be at about 12 health right now, because he would take the 11, 5 from Lava Burst, and then another 2 on top of that. So that's 19 just from playing Doctor Boom. So really goes to show how choosing to clear first is going to pave a much safer in game for him. Mm -hmm. This is where is the... the board. Nice. Yeah. Slide to the board is really powerful. I think this is where the ancestral knowledge. I think this is where you can BM Wild Growth, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like if you were ever going to do it, I think you can drop the style Wild Growth. And then you lose the game and look like a complete <laughs> douchebag. It's very hard to lose from this position. But I Either know way, you, mean. you get publicity. <laughs> and Hello, Jockey Reddit knows right? no publicity is bad publicity. <laughs> oh I really God. wish you would have done it. You know what? Uh, Hoy's actually done some stuff like that. In yeah, the past. he's he's done some emoting. He's had some fun when he was ahead, and a lot of people didn't appreciate that because he was <laughs> killing some of their favorite players. That you know, uh, I think it was wasn't it life coach. Life coach, and I think he also beat like Firebat in that way. He beat I'm a lot sure. of people. And people were like, nah, this what? guy said well played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, no, do not touch that well played button, man. <laughs> and he didn't mean it sincerely. <laughs> I love the topic oh. on Reddit. It had like 200 comments arguing people, was it like, he actually said well played, because he meant it. Well, a four here would end yeah. the game. The, the best is when they ask for the auto squelch, <laughs> of, and then they describe <laughs> their journey of how mad they've gotten. And I can totally identify. I, I sometimes tilt to that thing, too, but... Uh, yeah, good stuff. my my new form of BM on ladder is when when I win, I just emote well played. That seems to be the most tilting you can get. It is, is actually just saying you're, you're well a douche, played. Man. Why would you do that? People are just like, oh come on, you don't really mean that. <laughs> <laughs> what a sarcastic asshole. Well, uh, in this case, it looks like there's no hope for Kranich. All of his uh, damage has been thwarted, and like you said. It wasn't exactly uh, uh, pretty. It was kind of ugly fight there, but we got there. And Hoy was able to take a very important game one win because isn't this aggressive shaman supposed to punish 
normally slow starting decks like Druid. Yeah, but you had the nuts opening at Keeper, right? Yeah. Innervate Keeper With just the follow-up as well. Yeah. I mean, there were a few brick turns in the middle there, but got what he needed to finish it off in the end, and it really wasn't too close. I mean, we had that one turn that it kind of looked like maybe Kranich could come back, but... The combo yeah, the with Innervate. The Dr. Boom after the combo was really yes. what sealed it. And and w when you think about the game, it's just crazy that double Innervate had such an impact on the game because it, it accelerated yeah. uh, the plays by just a huge margin. For those of you who don't know, Lothar has a you know an intense <laughs> distaste and hated passion Same. against Innervate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think this card should be changed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the coin too, man. Kranich Zero is going to go demon. with <laughs> mid-range <laughs> Paladin <laughs> as his uh, counter deck to mid-range Druid. Tends to be favored for the Paladin side of things, but kind of looking deeper into how this match could go, like you said, that was a big win for Hoy because if he were to lose this game, he could just play Patron into Paladin next game, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and suddenly he's in a really good spot. Right, because then he exactly. uses Paladin to clean up the Druid in the final spot. Assuming that ends up working out, that way. Wow! Not bad. Good Druid player. Seems good. It feels like, um, you know, the best Druid players like Tyson Hoy tend to really draw these wild growths ex at the times they need it. And the difference between having it versus not having it is just night and day. But that doesn't necessarily even guarantee you anything. Sometimes mid-range Paladin is still really good at seizing tempo despite you ramping up mana crystals. So, um, it the Midrange Paladin should have a favorable matchup against Druid, but at the same time, it can be always turned like, you know, the other way around if there will be enough mana acceleration for the Druid, right? Yeah, but like, for example, this um, Druid the Claw probably can get, get answered. Pro yeah, probably going to get Keeper of Voldemort too. Yeah, Keeper yeah. Voldemort. You can see the power of a, a additional Peacekeeper, as you can say, like that. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's even better. Because right. it clears the board in this situation. Yeah, in this case, it's basically acting like a fire elemental. Yeah. Uh, rather than an outdoor peacekeeper. So, yeah, very it's like flexible a mix, card, very powerful card. Yeah. Mix between those two, because you actually uh, also uh, heal, your opponent, uh, heal your hero by two. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, by one. Okay, well, I mean, Hoy, it's not like Hoy doesn't have other things to do on his side here. It depends on... Uh, what he wants to do, because Shea of Nax Ramus and the Tharnas' Aspirin is asking to get Consecrated pretty heavily. So instead he chooses just to play Shade and take it a little bit slow against the Paladin, giving initiative, very strong initiative, I might add, because there's Lotheb in the, in the hand waiting. Yeah, and the Owl is actually going to end up being really important because Hoy's most likely just going to use Sylvanas to try and deal with this board, and that's going to be answered pretty easily just by Owl. And curving out to Dr. Boom, if Hoy doesn't pick up, like, Big Game Hunter, uh, he could be in really big trouble. Yeah, now that there's, like, two silver champion, like, very good tools to be able to answer mid-range threats, uh, I'm liking Kranich's position, even though we saw Hoy start off with that wild growth. Mm -hmm. But there's still some options to uh, steal the game uh, with huge bursts of damage, because uh, what is Kranich lacking is uh, taunts. So if, if Hoy manages to squeeze uh, damage and just draw in a force of nature, this might uh, also be just Whoa. ended fast. Wow. wow. Swipe Super bait. aggressive from Cringe. I like it. Yeah. yeah. He saw that he had Quartermaster, so he's going to say, if you don't have Swipe, I guess I'll win. Yeah, really forcing out the Swipe here. I was a little surprised because in the past, he's been more conservative with Muster in this uh, matchup, saving mm -hmm. it for the turn mm -hmm. that he can drop Quartermaster immediately. Uh, and in this game, he had a pretty good path to that. He could go boom, and then next turn, muster quartermaster, uh, going for the true silver last turn. But just goes with the very aggressive line, and it's probably going to get kind of punished. I mean, it's going to leave up that Sylvanas for sure. And we'll have to see if the Doctor Boom can you know, keep the aggression up and in this game. Well, one of the nice things, too, for Hoy is that he does have Savage Roar, so the moment he picks up some way to really combo it with Force of Nature or Drew the Claw, he'll be able to really pull on a, a ton of damage. In fact, I think if Drew the Claw is drawn, that's lethal. Drew doesn't really care about damage from the... Yeah, it would be. Pilot, right? Oh, wait. Close. Six. Doesn't have enough mana. Six, seven, twelve, seventeen damage right now. Uh, but you can also go for 
double keeper. Well, you could just trade in in the boom and keeper that, and then maybe you could play the second keeper, just setting up for the combo lethal next turn. That would make Tyrion much stronger, though, by using right. two keepers. So I guess maybe you'd go halfway, play a Darnassus Aspirin, mm -hmm. and then hero power down a boom bot instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, this allows you to build the board the pr almost the same way as double keepers, but mm -hmm. as I said, the, the, the Tyrion will not be a threat to you finishing the game, but at the same time, you will have to deal with the Tyrion next turn. And how do you deal with the Tyrion if you need to sacrifice your resources here to deal with the, uh, with the Dr. Boom? So if any minion lives and there's no taunt or heal, which of course, there are heals in Kranich's hand, so yeah. he can survive through this. But. And you know what? These boom bots might do some big work in controlling the state of the board. No. no. <laughs> it kind did. of a disappointment. Well, he's actually going to need more than lay on hands, because if he does lay on hands, he can't clear the board. And yeah. If he has qualities, he can't clear the board. Uh, so he can if the boom if bot, the boom bot hits well. Yeah, and then he'd be alive by exactly one health, which would be pretty clutch. All things he could considered, he could also true silver to gain two health. Don't know if that would matter. Oh, oh no! Is that it? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, oh, that, that is sad. It. Man. That is sad. Sixty-six percent to succeed, yeah. and yet it is a miss. I I wonder. Hmm? I probably would have got face. <laughs> In this situation, now that you're like dead to come no matter what, you could have gone face and wand with consecration, maybe. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's he's pretty close to killing the druid, but just yeah. a little bit too short. Just need one more turn, and hey, you know, being able to hit that wild growth and get that extra crystal on nine and all these old things well, ends up being the reason you can hit these combos. So the swipe turned the game around. Yeah, and I mean, Kranich went with that crazy aggressive line. Can't really say it was a a mistake, but definitely. The way he got punished made Hoy win that game very easily. That's true. That was the only way of, make, uh, of Hoy making a comeback because he Jeez. he wasn't pushed to use his minions and uh, as a comeback mechanism because that's always a problem for the druid because uh, he has to sacrifice board control uh, and can ad take advantage of his spells. This is a problem. He's down 0-2 and Kranich has to rely on druid mirror to get past first but he's playing the aggressive version so we'll see if that ends up getting the edge because traditionally the aggressive druid is is favored right crocky in this matchup uh, i think they'd probably be slightly favored uh is what i've heard from like kind of the more experienced aggro druid players uh it's definitely pretty close and if the early game kind of goes equal then obviously going to the late game there's much better minions from the mid-range side of things but uh, Fell Reaver is one of the cards that if you don't have Big Game Hunter, it can just run away with the game. It's true. Just so much pressure of a, like a two, three turn clock, and then you end the game here. Um, Kranich with an interesting set of options for Curve, but it looks like he doesn't want to play anything this turn because he doesn't have guarantee on playing anything on turn two. I think he has to save the coin. Uh, to just be on Curve, especially, uh, might be very important to get the Fell Reaver as soon as possible. Yeah, but that's really going to put him in a really weird spot. Like, if he goes with Knife Juggler now, you're so weak to keep the Grove, which is in Hoy's hand. And oh, oh, This man. is going to put him really far behind in this game. It's not as fast as Innervate Keeper, but it's still fast. Right. <laughs> fast I mean, enough. But the point is that the Narcissus Aspirin is also just fighting as a minion on board, and Kranich is really falling far behind. Yeah, and it's too late for his Darnassus Aspirin. Let's have Pilot Shredder, which is contesting these minions very well. Does it really matter? Because I think at this point, uh, the uh, mid-range druid will just play his own threat and just go face. Yeah, there's definitely not any efficient trades on this board, so... Hoy's minions almost certainly going face, and he can develop... I mean, that probably going to be just Shredder, but he could go, like, Shade Wild Growth. I mean, Shredder's just a solid minion if it, if it will cost 5 mana, right? Still would be playable here. It feels oh, like. Oh yeah, he'd definitely play it this turn, even if it was yeah. five mana. Even I mean, of course, Belcher would have been better, but then let's say. Yeah. Um, what else would you have? Uh, what's the new better bodyguard, bodyguard beast destroyer? Evil Heckler. Mm -hmm. Evil Heckler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five you mana. Five your evil Heckler down here. Uh, 
That must have been the greatest card to voice. I can imagine like Ben Brode feeding 15,000 insults using Lepre uh, using Hearthstone terms like Leprechaun. <laughs> Is he pretty? Oh, no. for a second. But it, but the arrow looks like so. Yeah. Well, uh, in this case, you do have Swipe to help control a little bit of stuff. But, I mean, you're being really defensive in that scenario. Maybe it's just better to be proactive and try to use something like Keeper of the Grove here. I don't know. This is a tough position. First, I guess he kills off the Dynamite Sad, but that needs to die. But what do you follow it up with? Raptor does trade pretty well into the Shredders. Kind of encouraging his opponent to not really trade onto the board, and that might give an opportunity for him to line up a good swipe, or even set up for a good Feral Revert the following turns. Here's a good question. Do you go for the Wild Grove so you can uh, play Ancient of Law next turn, or you just go for the Power of the Necronome? And I think hearing, uh, clearing a minion of your hero power would be... Not a very good Shredder Drop. Yeah, um, looks like that gets picked off easily. I mean, it's one of those things that could end up developing to a threat, but, you know, that's a generally a high-priority minion to remove. It's got taunt. Yeah, I, I guess the nice thing is it kind of draws pressure off your, your other minion. It's true that Mount Raptor can maybe pick up a better trade, but oh, we'll see. Because this is the turn where you decide to, you know, really put Fel Reaver on the map and go aggressive. Or you choose to really buckle down, be defensive, but I think Fell Reaver is your best shot here. Well, I think he has to kind of be a. Like, he has to be a that, little defensive. Oh my god, Bladem is the worst possible minion. Yeah. Unless it happens to put Fell Reaver out of reach for damage. Well. It's not. You can definitely clear it with multiple things. And swipe here! Wow, Swipe actually uh, allows him... He'd have to trade in uh, twice, though. Yeah. But I was thinking, like, how there's other one-health minions, and it even reaches the Blood Imp. What about just going face? <laughs> that is kind of the Druid way of thinking. Yeah. You're, like, thinking about all the trades, and you're like, wait a second. I can just <laughs> set up lethal for two tunes. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, but what if I... I it looks face. like that's what he's doing. Like, I like I it. mean... The bad thing about Fell Reaver is it's a lot of power, but it's centralized in one minion. You can't trade efficiently. Especially when the minions have the best on Yeah, so... And I mean, the aggro druid doesn't play as many taunts. It doesn't play heals, so... It, there's not going to no. be many answers to this aggression. So he has to be mm. defensive and... Go for the swipe? Yeah, swipe and Drew the Saber allows you to remove a couple of these threats here. Yeah, I think you have to try and line up some sort of lethal push. Well, that's certainly going face, but I think... That's, that's just game. That's just game, <laughs> unless yeah. oh, oh, this oh, will oh, go oh, into oh. one of the puzzle shredders Hold and on. get oh. AR. Oh. Yeah, he, set, he tried to set up the lethal, didn't work out, and Hoi does have a card that does four damage, so... Well, that was fast. Yeah, that was a 3-0 to wrap up the day here with the Hoi Druid, and that means Cranish is done in the top 16, meaning... Once again, another player goes home with no points and no money. But, you know, Sad Hoy has been unstoppable. Another 3 0. Wow, this guy's really on fire today. Not only today, like in general. Yeah, just it, the, like it's, his, his, it's his tournament. And yeah. this is starting to be scary because every player that has this kind of streak going into the matches that do matter ends up losing in the, in the first round. So I'm kind of scared for Hoy tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Usually that's kind of how it works. Yeah, you have like an amazing run through the Swiss portions, and even the first series where it kind of leads into the playoffs. But then you just drop the first series, and I mean, for every game that he's going to be starting off with wild growth in our Aspen, there's going to be games where he doesn't, and that's going to be tough. Well, Hoy uh, does end up winning the series, and he is definitely on a roll. I was going to join us for a quick interview, real quick, while we get ready to wrap up the day here. Hey guys. Hey Hoy, what's Hello, up? Hoy. <laughs> you can just sit down. Doing weird things, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? <laughs> Frio. <coughs> <coughs> Uh yeah, sorry about that. I was just you know choking on that 
dank meme. So, uh, you know, Hoy, sit, sit down, man. Relax, relax. Be chill. It's cool. You're making me nervous there. Oh, so, you only want to sit on the box, you know? Um, you know, there's a little bit of tension. You you killed Chucky's teammate and yeah, uh, the last hope of getting the toss. So you proved Sorry. which team is better at black and yellow. We, yeah, we, we when we walk around, like we walk around with Sixo and Hoy and Oskaka, <laughs> we just look like one giant bumblebee squad. <laughs> <laughs> so. They're like, wow, those guys are really dedicated to their bike gangs. Like, but Green yeah. Sheep is still alive, right? He is. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I forgot about that. Uh, we, my we've apologies. got the dream still. Seth so Roden, please. Right. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> no. sorry, Hoy. I, it's I a long apologize. day. It's Give been a long break. day, yeah. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about your tournament run. Yeah. Um, you, I, I hear you've been sweeping everybody, and it doesn't really matter if you're playing like Druid or Paladin. Um, it, you know, what, what is there a secret to it, or is it just you feel like you've just been on a good streak and you've just been playing solidly? Yeah, I think it, the secret is just secret then. It's just been drawing well, <laughs> Doctor Six, Doctor Seven, Doctor Eight, and it's just going well, well for this tournament. Mm, gotcha. It's Oh, so it's, it's 21 one. I've lost one game with it. I it's 21 and one. Yeah, the secret. Name. Wow, so. that's pretty nuts. Uh, who, who are some of the hardest opponents that you had to face on your journey? Because I think the more you win, you've hurt. You've hit some really tough opponents. Yeah, I played against at you and Green Ship and York and yeah, e even Purple also. So you played against Purple. Wow, that's right. In the final round, I believe. Yeah, so in the last final round. Okay. Mm. Who's your next opponent? Do you know? Uh, Orange, I think. Orange. Okay. How do you okay. feel like you match up against mm. someone like Orange? I'm not sure what his lineup is, but uh, hopefully I'm gonna make it. He's really good though. So. Okay. Well, uh, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the bracket to see uh, how Hoy's journey would continue to go. Uh, after he plays against Orange, you play against the winner of Chorik and Ursi. It's nice to see that oh, you yeah. already put him in the yeah, winner's position. Yeah, you're just position. assuming he wins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, after and after he wins that, he'll be in the final. <laughs> Yeah, and then you can yeah, assume who's yeah, in the final. He'll play side. probably the winner of, uh, well, Purple versus AK Wonder is going to be interesting. And then uh, Boros, who was able to take out Zed a lot, versus Green Sheep. Maybe, maybe you can play a Dignitas player in the finals. Yeah, that would be nice. Green Sheep. It would be nice. Interesting. Um, you know, do you feel like a burden at all that, like, you know, Navi coming here with some high expectations? I, I was predicting you and Sixo to do very well. Oh, thank you. But uh, one of the two players ended up working out. But you, not every player can win here. Um, and then Oskaka end up dropping out as well. Do you feel like it's like you, you yeah, need like a really high win rate to get through this? You, mm -hmm. It's like you need to win seven out of nine games, mm -hmm. so it's really hard. So mm -hmm. that's a little log in it. But if you're consistent, I think you can do it. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Just the single elimination that strikes harder. Sure. Yeah. After, th after that, this was really uh, I was really stressful for this match. It's like you have played Swiss for like twelve all hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and then one game can decide it all. So yeah. Yeah. too much pressure in one game. Really and Krenitz, I was really unlucky to face Krenitz. He's really good. Mm. So, uh, Hoy, let's, you've played through um, pretty much every kind of format now. You've played through, like, the, the group stages of stuff. You've played through the Swiss. You've done a lot of online tournaments. Yeah. Uh, do you like this one the best, do you feel like? Last year Sunday? Um, well, I, you can talk about anything. The format, the f fact that we're doing Swiss, the 200-man brackets, etc. Yeah, I, I think Swiss, for, Swiss format is really good, but I think this should be, like... Uh, Double elimination bracket after the switch format, but it's many games. But <laughs> I don't know. So you want to play more games more after games. <laughs> after everything's been said and done? You're like talking about how exhausting it is. I mean, I guess so. Every player wants more games to well, reduce the Well, double elimination the bracket would make um, would be a logical decision decision if there would be a top eight only. An example. Okay, yeah. makes sense. Right. Makes sense. All right. Well, uh, Chuck, do you have anything to ask Hoy? How do you do it? Just right. <laughs> <laughs> just right. Go with it. Like yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> you just like it's like Mulligan my I whole hand and get a perfect hand, right? Yeah, it's just pure skills, man. Pure skills. <laughs> pure skills. Twenty-one and one. Yeah, I can teach you True. one day. Yeah, Frodo asked if there, <laughs> if there was a secret to it. There's like there's like five secrets. Come on. <laughs> so, well, eight if you're playing. You have to write Cabot Pride one, two, three in chat before you do it. Oh, okay. Before That's Mulligan. It is. A, it's a nice little ritual. So that's that's you in chat. Great. Now I can uh, know who to time out. All right. Well, uh, that's going to wrap it up, guys, for today. Congratulations to all of our winners in the top eight. Uh, we are going to be playing out tomorrow once again here on the stream at twitch.tv slash dreamhackhs. Uh, make sure to let everyone know that you guys are watching as well by hashtagging DHW15. We're going to be starting at 12.30 p.m. Central European time right here in the same exact studio from Frodan, Lothar, Chucky, and Hoy, who's going to the top eight. Have a good night, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.